2011, thousands of people in Wisconsin protested against a bill that would eliminate the right to collective bargaining over everything except wages. How does this relate to economics? And what are the underlying issues? In the labor market, we see the normal market functions working nicely. The producer demands labor as one of the inputs for production, and the individual supplies the market with labor in exchange for income and benefits. The employer and employee negotiate and determine a wage for the labor. Do each of the parties come to the bargaining table as equals? Does one wield more power than the other in the negotiation process? The majority of observers support that the employer has the upper hand in labor negotiations. To address this inequality of power in the labor market, labor unions were organized. In this chapter, we will discuss three issues related to the labor markets. Labor unions, discrimination, and immigration. U.S. labor law, regulations, and court rulings provide for not only the safety and rights of workers, but they also provide for the ability for, for workers to join together in a labor union. In this way, they are no longer a single worker negotiating with a single employer, but a group of workers negotiating with an employer. This joint negotiation is called collective bargaining. Historically, unions have made a positive impact on the working conditions for employees. Unions have also impacted the pay and benefits of union members positively. On average, union workers receive 20% more in pay and benefits than their non-union counterparts. Historically, unions have also benefited ethnic minorities in the labor market. Here is the historical participation of workers in unions. The share of wage and salary workers who belong to unions rose sharply in the 1930s and 1940s, but has tailed off since then to 11.3% of all workers in 2012. This graph shows how a union can impact wages in the labor market. Without a union, the equilibrium at E would have involved the wage WE and the quantity of labor QE. However, the union is able to use its bargaining power to raise the wage to WU. The result is an excess supply of labor for union jobs. That is, a quantity of labor supplied, QS, is greater than firm's quantity demanded for labor, QD. Over the years, job types that have supported union activities have shrunk in relation to other job types. Non-governmental service jobs are typically not unionized. Jobs and services have increased dramatically in the last few decades. Jobs in government have increased modestly. Jobs in manufacturing have not changed much, although they have trended down in recent years. In the labor market, race and gender discrimination has had an impact on wages earned. The ratio of wages for black workers to white workers rose substantially in the late 1960s and through the 1970s, but has not changed much since then. The ratio of wages for female to male workers changed little through the 1970s, but has risen substantially since the 1980s. In both cases, a gap remains between the average wages of black and white workers and between the average wages of female and male workers. Discrimination has not only affected wages, but overall workforce participation. Diversity in the workforce is projected to change over time. This figure shows projected changes in the ethnic makeup of the U.S. population by 2060. Note that the NHPI stands for Native, Hawaiian, and Other Pacific Islander. AIAN stands for American Indian and Alaska Native. In this graph, we see the historical fluctuation in immigration numbers for the U.S. The number of immigrants in each decade declined between 1900 and the 1940s, but has risen sharply in recent decades. Immigration can have both positive and negative impacts on the economy. Some of the benefits are an increase in production through an increase in the labor force, and an increase in consumption as the population increases 
and demands more of all goods and services. Immigration impacts wage levels mostly in a negative way. However, not all types of wages are affected equally. Wages for low-skilled and part-time laborers can be greatly decreased. One study showed a 10% increase in immigration led to a 3% decrease in hours worked by low-skilled workers. The wage per hour is not impacted greatly, however. Immigration can put a strain on government safety net programs. This occurs because the immigration of low-skilled laborers is much more than high-skilled laborers, which leads to an increase in the poverty rate.